So my name is uh, Thomas Logan, and um, today my presentation is about uh, inspiring accessibility solutions from today's uh, virtual reality experiences. So the reality is that uh, when I talk about accessibility, I'm talking about access for people with disabilities. And if you look at a lot of the titles that exist, um, inside of this technology, they don't actually work for people with disabilities. So the point of this uh, conversation is to show you companies and show you projects that actually have support and done work uh, to consider people with disabilities and hopefully become patterns that lots of people implement inside of their application. Uh, slide. So I'm coming to you today from Tokyo, Japan. Um, it's my morning on Friday here. And uh, this is something I love about virtual reality that we can all join from uh, wherever we are coming from inside of the world. And so I have been living in Japan for the last year and a half. And uh, this virtual reality topic has been one of my core passions. Uh, my company, Equal Entry, also works uh, on accessibility for websites, mobile applications, digital kiosks. Um, so we, we basically want to work on any type of technology and make sure that it's accessible and available to everyone. That slide. So now we're going to dive right in. I, uh, I'm a very demonstration-based presenter. And I just want to show you examples of things that have inspired me um, inside of virtual reality. So the first feature we're going to do, um, hopefully this video plays. Let's see, this is from Vacation Simulator. And it may not be playing, but this video or Vacation Simulator is one of the most popular titles um, in virtual reality. It's made by Alchemy Labs, which was acquired by Google. and what they did uh, in Vacation Simulator, they have a, another game called Job Simulator. The idea of the game is you can virtually experience these uh, things that used to happen in the real world. And the idea of the game was in 2040 or 2060, like sometime in the future, people might not understand that humans used to work at a convenience store or humans used to go to the beach and play beach volleyball. So the, the idea of the game is kind of cute that um, it's sort of supposed to be in the future and teaching people how our lives were today. And so what's very interesting in this game um, is they've added this captioning feature. And in the slide, it's, it's, a, it's kind of faint, but there's a pointer for the captions. And so inside of virtual reality, um, if you have closed captioning, you need to actually know who is speaking. And because you can turn around in like 360 degrees inside of virtual reality, if you were just only reading the captions, you don't necessarily know who those captions should be associated with. So something very cool in uh, Vacation Simulator is there's a pointer to tell you which way to turn your head. So if the pointer is pointing to the right, it's saying, hey, the person that's speaking is like over to the right and you move, move your head. Once you're looking at the person that's speaking, the pointer goes away. If the person that was speaking is on your left, there'll be a pointer on the left hand side and you turn to your left and you look at the person on the left. Um, this, this is kind of meta since we're here in alt space and using like a new captioning feature. This feature inside of alt space is also interesting because it's showing that the caption appears next to the person that's speaking. And so that's a that's another idea of a solution. But I think what we would be considering here is that um, we definitely need some directionality or some way to associate captions with an avatar. And if we don't have that functionality inside of games, if we just have plain captions, it's not going to be a good experience for someone that's deaf or hard of hearing or someone relying on the captions. So I definitely really like that solution from Vacation Simulator. 
uh, slide. So this is kind of another dramatic example, uh, switching into thinking about, um, I think a lot of us that are here today are inside of a Quest or a Vive. There's lots of different devices uh, for accessing virtual reality. And standing, standing up in virtual virtual reality and tight spaces uh, can be difficult for everyone. So as I mentioned, uh, I live in Tokyo. I used to live in New York City. Um, I've never really had the recommended amount of space to use virtual reality experiences. And so this is actually uh, Arizona Sunshine is an example of a game where you are um, killing zombies and it's uh, you're in on the screen. I have a, a gun in my hand <laughs> pointed right at the face uh, of a zombie and it's very a uh, stressful game and uh if we go to the next slide uh what happened to me this is a true story um i actually had a jar of salsa on my desk while i was playing this game where you're shooting a zombie and in in the real world i knocked over a jar of salsa onto the ground and it kind of looks like blood and gore so when i took off my headset and looked in my real space i'm like oh my gosh uh <laughs> you know i've created something that i was doing in the virtual game in the real world um and i just use this to tell the story that this is an unfortunate reality of a lot of vr experiences is you get so inside of the experience itself that you don't realize what's happening in the real world and so in my example you know, I knocked over a jar of salsa. But what's kind of cool to think about for this is that a seated experience, something that would work well for a person in a wheelchair, um, this is sort of a design goal for a lot of VR experiences. We should not have to like do big movements inside of the experience to be able to get enjoyment from the experience and to fully participate. And so uh, going back to the vacation simulator example from uh, the, the first example, they actually redesigned that game to make it be able to be totally played from a seated position. So if someone could be seated, they might be in a wheelchair, they might just be wanting to sit you know, at a desk and do the experience. They, they redesigned the game so that you don't have to reach you know, three feet four feet uh, move around inside of a space and do it. And so I think that's a um, really important consideration. And it's it's like, yes, maybe you can do some cool things with moving around in VR. But from the accessibility perspective, we want to make sure there's always a way to do the operation or do that, you know, complete the experience in a seated position, uh, because some people are not going to be standing while they complete it. And it goes into that idea that accessibility, once we implement these features, it actually benefits everyone. And again, take my example of, you definitely don't want to have to clean up a jar of salsa from the floor. Uh, slide. All right, so our next example, uh, just moving through, lots of examples here, uh, 360 degree video audio descriptions. So if you, uh, have Netflix today and you're watching a video on Netflix. Now on Netflix, you can turn on a feature called audio descriptions. And this is basically a feature for people who are blind or low vision to get uh, auditory information about what's happening visually on the screen. And so a, a good example of this was the uh, series Daredevil on Netflix, which is about a crime fighting superhero who is blind, when that first came out, it did not have audio descriptions. So people who are blind that were listening only to the audio of the video, they could hear punching sounds or hear like uh, you know, chopping sounds, but have no idea of what's actually happening on screen. And so an audio description would be like Daredevil like punches man in face, Daredevil slides underneath a uh, gate and uh, does cartwheel into uh, another action sequence. So that that works in 2D, but in 3D um, and 360 degrees, we have to think about action is happening whichever direction we look in VR. And so my company, 
Equal Entry has been doing work on how do we provide audio descriptions for media that happens in 360 degrees. And they, the slide right here is showing a scuba diver underwater, and there's a text that says turn around. So visually, the VR experience is telling you you need to turn around to see some action. Um, and so we'll do slide. So this was our um, proposal. It's uh, an idea of starting from what the default view is inside of a 360 degree experience and then adding captions for the direction someone can can be looking so right now this kind of captioning has to be done manually and when we provide a description for people who are blind we have to do it live quote unquote there's not a way to like record this currently in virtual reality technology and have it played back for someone the same way that netflix works so we want to advocate that there should be a dedicated way to provide these descriptions in 360 media. But for now, like what our company is excited about is we can at least write a script of what you should read when someone looks in a certain direction. And that can actually be done live. And we have um, done some user testing of that with people with disabilities to find out you know, their feedback. Um, on screen text says, so this one looks like it's loaded. Oh, yeah, actually, from slowly along the bottom, slowly coming towards you. It bites you in the face. So I'm, so I'm seeing video now. Oh um, yeah, I see video. Excellent. The second diver picks you up. Oh, no. So that was, um, a little quiet. Most of the other videos are going to be louder, but um, that video was to show you that when you turn around, you actually see a hammerhead shark uh, coming at you and almost biting you in the face. So very dramatic. On screen text says, "Turn around." A hammerhead shark swims slowly along yeah. the bottom. So this is the the shark, and if you didn't get that information, text says, turn um, around. And You're really the shark swims slowly along the bottom, of the application. slowly coming towards you. It bites Whoa. you in the face. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! An underwater cameraman <laughs> swims over to check on you. A second diver picks you up. Oh no! <laughs> so what I like about that example, hopefully you can hear the audio, is that James Herndon, who was doing the audio description, you know, put some inflection, put some excitement into the description and the, the person that's listening to the description has a big reaction like oh no like the shark came at me and you know was biting me in the face that's not that that's like the whole point of that vr experience and so without having that audio description someone that can't see that creation just misses out on that whole experience so we want to make sure that experience is inclusive my next example is about uh, this thing called stub pack. It's uh, something you wear on your back, and it is a uh, backpack that can do um, haptic feedback. And haptic feedback is basically touch, some, a way to feel things. And so Beat Saber, um, I'm just going to hopefully be able to show the next video. We'll go to the next slide. This, this is an example of paper being Ask him, does he think he will get better the more he plays? Do you think he will become better the more he plays? Yes, yeah, definitely. The more I play, the more, the more he gets better. The more he gets better. So this is the second time that Troy's tried Beat Saber. What did you think of Beat Saber? Wow, absolutely amazing. As a deaf person using the sub pack and the VR, I just felt in a virtual reality world that I've never experienced before. Uh, this is Matthew's first ever trial. But did he say, 
down was yeah good good perfect right what did you think of beat saber the, the game is wicked 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 it's out of this world yes so what i like about this beat saber example probably like a standard thing that you uh hear from people they'll say oh a person that's deaf or a person that's hard of hearing why do they care about music or they don't need to hear music and what's really cool about that example is it's pointing out that vibration you can feel the beat you can feel the the momentum um you can have you you can experience the music and that's what i really liked about that example from beat saber is the game is rhythm based and turning on um that functionality and so this is something that um with that wearable it made that game very fun and exciting for people uh who are deaf and hard of hearing and so that was the video we were just showing Now I'm going to talk about Beat Saber for colorblindness. So colorblindness, at least in the United States, affects about 8% of uh, American males. So it's uh, a, a fairly large number of people that have uh, colorblindness. And Beat Saber has done a pretty cool implementation of making sure that their game can work for people that have uh, red-green colorblindness, which is the most uh, common type of colorblindness. So this is a, uh, a virtual picture of someone holding the, the beat sabers uh, in, in virtual reality. And the game is basically you're chopping uh, blocks that come at you, which is exciting for us to try since we're using this cool caption feature. Um, so I want to highlight um, where we were right before we came, came back into the space was the uh, beat saber colorblindness uh, support. So Beat Saber did implement a way to change the colors to be blue and yellow um, instead of red and green for uh, chopping those blocks that we were showing on the screen. And that mode, um, what I wanted to highlight is that it's designed, it's thought out. So Beat Saber didn't just like put a filter on the entire experience and turn it, um, you know, blue yellow they thought about like the po the purpose of this game is to smash these box boxes uh on a rhythm and so they made the boxes the, like primary part of the interface um support that mode and so it's it's just interesting to um consider that a lot of times with accessibility people just do the minimum and they don't think about the actual design and so i wanted to highlight that from beat saber that you can actually tell that they thought about the design, they thought about what people are doing in Beat Saber, and they made the experience work really well. You know, they obviously tested with people who are colorblind and then got feedback on that. Um, this example. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks, Thomas, uh, for, thank you. I wish we could have whole, heard more of your presentation. Maybe we'll have to offer this again. Um, and thanks, uh, Schmidtech, for your technical support, it was invaluable. Thank you so Thanks, much. Everyone. <laughs> Thank you everyone also for testing these features with us. And uh, please do give your feedback to the Alt Space team using the URL behind me. They'll really appreciate it. The good things and not just the uh, suggestions. Thanks for coming, see you next time. Thank you for hosting. Oh, thank, thank you. you very much.